Two thousand years ago, a thousand years before the time of this story, there was a Sinhalese king named Valahambahu. During his time too, the Tamil army invaded Sri Lanka. Then Valahambahu fled from the capital and was hiding in a mountain cave near Tambalat. Then he again gathered an army and went and captured an Aradapura. He further dug the mountain cave that had threatened him and turned it into a temple. To express his gratitude to the Lord Buddha, he had many Buddha statues built inside the cave. The sculptors who built hundreds of Buddha statues were not satisfied that they had fully demonstrated their sculptural skills. So they built some of the images of Hindu deities between the Buddha statues. Those wonderful sculptural wonders can be seen even today in a cave temple in the town of Tambalat. When Vandiyathevan entered the holy place, he felt that he had entered a new world. The fragrance of fresh flowers made him dizzy. Lotus buds and red flowers were piled up on the roadsides. Devotees bought amels and carried them in beautiful thatched baskets and proceeded towards the temple. Pilgrims of men and women blocked the streets. Buddhist ascetics wearing saffron robes were also seen here and there. A loud chant of sadhu, sadhu arose from the crowd of devotees. All these surprised Vandiyathevan. Looking at all were Kadian, he said, we thought we were coming to Yadakendra. Isn't this a Buddhist temple? He said. Yes, father. Is this a famous Buddhist temple for a thousand years? All were Kadian said. But you said it was in the hands of the Chola army. Yes, I say so now. Do we see any Chola soldiers here? They are in barracks outside the city. Such is the prince's order. Which prince? Why? He's the prince we've been looking for. I wanted to ask you about that. After looking for the prince here and finding no, is Parthibendra going back? What's the use of us looking for him here again? Will I believe because that Pallava said no? I will find out by myself. Iranian said that there is no god called Harry. Did Pralada believe that? Oh! Valiant Vaishnava! Have you come to our country fighting the Saivas incessantly? So many Buddhist ascetics are going here. Do you come here for nothing? What is the reason? Are you frightened by the multitude of enemies? Brother! What is fear? What does it look like? The black one is as big as an elephant. Have you ever seen one? No all Workadian said and approached two men who were standing on the side of the road having fun. They looked like Tamils. After talking to them for a while, all Workadian came back. Vaishnava! What did you ask them? Did you ask whether Vishnu is great or Buddha is great? In this town, whoever you ask, they say Buddha is great. Don't you see how huge every Buddha statue is? Brother, I packed up all my heroic Vaishnava in Rameswaram and came here as a royal matter, do you see? Then what did you ask those men? Did you inquire about the prince? No, I asked what was special about this town today. What did they say? Two Chinese pilgrims are going to come here today, a festival is going on in the Buddha Vihara on that occasion, that is why there is such a commotion in the town. Where do Chinese pilgrims come from? They came here yesterday and went to Simagari. They said that they are coming from Simagari now and will be here shortly. Where is Simagari? It is within earshot of here. It is still in the hands of the Sinhalese. You can see it from here if it is daylight. There is a strong fort on the top of the Simagari hill. There are wonderful immortal paintings in a cave. The Chinese pilgrims must have gone there to see those paintings. They would have struggled to get up and down the hill. Look! A large decorated elephant was coming to the place all Workadian had pointed out. Two people were sitting on its ambari. Their appearance and dress indicated that they were Chinese pilgrims. An elephant man was sitting on the elephant's neck with an angus in his hand. The people surrounding the elephant raised various slogans. Did you see? All Workadian said. I saw, I saw. Mother! How big is the elephant? Can I see if there is a hole somewhere on the side? No, no, just stand aside on the street. In the same way, 
when the elephant approached, they stood aside on the side of the road. The elephant passed them, the crowd also followed the elephant. Vandiyathevan had his eye on the pilgrim who was staying at Amberi. He marveled at the devotion of the Chinese who had travelled so far and crossed so many seas to visit the holy places of the Buddhas. It is only fair that so many favours should be given to them here. But how amazing is it that even when the war is going on, they do not participate in the pilgrimage. It must have been the arrangement of Prince Arulmas Hivarmar. He is the one who can do such great things. But where would he be now? Is it possible to track him down? Will travelling with this Vaishnava be in vain? Brother! Did you see? All Workadians said. I saw. What do you know? The faces of the Chinese pilgrims looked shabby and their clothes strange. I didn't hear about the pilgrims. Back. I asked, have you looked at the elephant and the Bagan? An elephant worshipper? I never noticed. Beautiful. Didn't you notice the light in that elephant's eyes when his gaze accidentally fell on us? What is that? Is there a torch in the elephant's eyes to make them shine? You are a good man. I don't know whether to wonder at your imprudence, or at the young brat who entrusted you with so important a matter. Let me go. Come with me. They also kept going at a little distance behind the elephant and the crowd surrounding the elephant. When he arrived at the door of the Buddha Vihara, the elephant stopped. Then the elephant knelt down to say something. The pilgrims disembarked. Chinese pilgrims were greeted by Buddhist bhikkhus standing in a crowd at the entrance of the Buddha Vihara. Associations rang out, the bells rang. Flowers showered from the main dome of the Viharam. Buddha Saranam Kakami became a slogan. Both the Chinese pilgrims entered the Viharat. Most of those present followed them into the Vihara. Before the pilgrims disembarked, the elephant Bagan, who had dismounted from the elephant's neck, raised the elephant and led it away. He looked at the four who were standing at a distance. He entrusted the elephant to one of them. He pointed to another person and said something. He took the other two and turned and disappeared in a short time around a bend in the road. To whomsoever elephant Bagan pointed out the Alvarcadian, he came towards the place where they were standing. In a soft voice, he asked Alvarkadian, Sir, do you agree to come with me? He asked. That's what we are waiting for, said Alvarkadian. Any identification? Alvarkadian showed the Kajumbalar seal ring given by the Sinodipity. Okay, follow me, he said, and they followed him to go ahead. After going beyond the village, a narrow forest path was seen. After going a short distance through it, they reached a dilapidated hall a little away from the path. The person who brought them informed that they should wait for some time. Then he climbed a tree and began to observe closely the way they had come. What is this mystery? I don't understand anything. Vandiyathevan asked. Everything will be clear soon. Hang on. All Workadians said. Two horses were tied at the back of the hall. The fact that there were only two horses made Vandiyathevan a little worried. What is the mystery of the elephant pagan? The god's eyes looked up at his face for a moment. Then he turned his attention to the Chinese pilgrims. He tried to think of the elephant's face. Nothing came to mind. Vaishnava. Who is that elephant boy? Shouldn't you tell me? Who would it be? Guess for yourself, brother. Is Nape Pagan the son of a princess? So it seemed from the momentary gleam in his eyes. Won't others know him as well as you? No, who would expect a prince to be an elephant to pilgrims from China? And the people of this town have never seen a prince. Didn't you say the Chinese pilgrims came from Simagari? Yes. Didn't you say that Simagari is still in the hands of the Sinhalese? Told you. Then the prince returns after having gone among the enemy. What about Simagari alone? The prince has also returned with Chinese pilgrims to Mahayangana, Samantakudam, etc., in the middle of the hostile territory. Why risk so much? It is because of the overwhelming desire to see those places and the sculptural wonders there. 
Good wish. Good prince. Did that childish soothsayer say that such a sportsman would be the emperor that King Mudi would adore? Did the soothsayer say so, brother? Do you believe that too? I don't believe in divination. I don't need to see divination. What's behind? I know for sure without divination. Suddenly the sound of horses' hooves was heard. The sound was getting closer to where they were. The man who was watching from the top of the tree rushed down. He came holding the two horses. He got into one. He asked Alwarkadian to climb on top of the other. There will be some horses along this path in a little while. We must follow them, he said. Van die the van a horse for me. He asked. I am commanded to bring him only. Whose command? I have no authority to say that. I must see the prince at once. I bring very important news. I know nothing about that, sir. All Alwarkadian said, brother. Be patient. I will go and tell the prince and make arrangements to bring you to Vaishnava. Don't you know that the message I have brought is very important, very urgent? Give me that leaf, I will. It can't. Then wait a minute, there's no other way. Is there no other way? Not at all. Vandiyadeva's heart sank. There is no doubt that they are going to take all Alwarkadian to the prince. Senathapati has told him to observe what Ashwarkadian is telling him. Will it be impossible? The horses approached, they passed where they were, they flew at lightning speed. Both of them, who were ready on the horses in the hall, pulled the horse's face rope and urged it to go. At that time an unexpected incident happened. Vandiyadeva grabbed one of the legs of the man on the horse and pushed him. The man fell to the ground. Vandiyadeva jumped on his horse, the horse flew. Alwarkadian's horse also flew away. The fallen warrior screamed and threw the knife from the sheath. Vandiyadeva bowed his head and lay down against the back of the horse. The knife thrown by the warrior flew fast and plunged deep into a tree. Both the horses flew away. These two horses followed the three horses in front, not too close and not too far behind. Nice job, bro. Alwarkadian encouraged Vandiyathevan. But Vandiyathevan did not say anything in reply. He was worried about what the outcome would be. The thought also arose that why did we cross the sea and come to this distant land and get into such a dilemma for the sake of a woman's word. The horses were going at a galloping maddening pace through the narrow forest path.